I wanted to walk through the process of flashing and configuring a Raspberry Pi with the first build of the disk image and configuration tools. Got a surprising amount done in the past few days and things are to the point where I think someone with exactly the same hardware configuration could replicate what I've done. I have some instructions written up but the process is still a bit involved so I wanted to go through it on video. The USB audio devices I'm using are made by Milso. I got them on Amazon. I selected them for two reasons. First, both my headset and radio use the TRRS single plug audio cables for speaker and voice, so I don't need any additional adapter cables. Second, when I put all this in an enclosure, I can simply drill holes in the side and glue the connectors in place without needing to buy an extension cable. Um, keep in mind, some of these USB audio devices are fairly large, and the USB ports on the Raspberry Pi are all pretty close together, so whatever you buy, make sure they all fit. I'm doing this all on a Windows machine, because that's probably what most people will have. You will require two pieces of software that I provide and an off-the-shelf utility to flash the SD card with the firmware image. You will, of course, need an SD card for this procedure. The disk image is only 32 megabytes, so any SD card you have will probably work. The first step is to download the Flash utility. This is an open source program called Blana Etcher. I have no association with that project. It was simply recommended by the Raspberry Pi website as a way to flash an SD card on Windows. Um, it works reasonably well, but if you have a preferred tool, you can use it. <coughs> you will then need the firmware image to flash onto your SD card. Download the sdcard.img.zip file. And finally, you will need the Crypto Transceiver Util program. Download the Crypto Transceiver Util.exe file. Extract the files from the sdcard.img file. You should be left with a file called sdcard.img. Then start the Bolana Etcher program and follow the instructions. Once that's done, you'll have to disconnect and reinsert the SD card into the system to complete the rest of the process. Now run the Crypto Transceiver Util program. This program requires a fairly recent version of the .NET runtime. I think it's 4.7.1, uh, which you may need to install. Uh, Windows may warn you that the software might be harmful. If you trust me, you can unblock the program. Now, uh, let's click the New Key button, then click the Save Key to SD button, and select the SD card, then press OK. If it all worked, the program doesn't say anything, although it probably should. Now you can eject the SD card from the Windows machine and insert it into your Raspberry Pi. and the remainder of the work will be done on the Raspberry Pi. For the initial setup, you will need the Pi plugged into a monitor using the HDMI port. You will also need a keyboard hooked up, but I recommend waiting until after the system finishes booting since it might interfere with the initialization order of the USB devices. Turn on the Pi and wait for it to finish booting. Once it does, you should hear what sounds like noise coming out of one of the audio devices. Watch my last video if you need a refresher of what that sounds like. That is the device that will be connected to your radio or telephone. The other will be connected to your headset. 
To configure the device, I recommend using a male-to-male -male audio cable to connect the radio transmitter output to the radio receiver input. This will test the operation of the entire system and play back whatever you say into your microphone back into your headset, which will allow you to fine tune the system. I have my system set up like that right now, which you can see. Now plug in my keyboard. Now follow the prompts to adjust the headset. If you can hear yourself, that means the audio or the radio transmit and receive is working properly. If you can't, follow the prompts to adjust the radio settings until you can. If the input is so loud that it's clipping or the output is too faint, the system may not be able to decode the digital signal. This part is hard to show on video, but I'm using the arrow keys, the left and right arrow keys to go between the speaker and microphone. And then I'm using the up and down arrow keys to adjust the volume on the microphone and speaker until I can hear myself reasonably well. Uh, the process is, is exactly the same on the radio side, except that adjusting the audio settings won't make your voice louder or quieter. What will happen is if it's too loud, um, the, the signal will just drop out or it'll start to become very scrambled. Um, then you'll need to either adjust your microphone or speaker settings. Um, you probably can err on the side of um, being reasonably low on both of those. But um, I wouldn't go too low because then your uh, the the signal to noise ratio on that uh, on that side gets gets low, and you might have problems um, with picking up faint signals. Um, once you're happy with the settings, press Escape. Then follow the prompts to save the settings, which will write them to the SD card. Uh, the next time the device is powered on, your settings will be loaded from the SD card, so you shouldn't need to do this again. Um, now you should be able to use your device.